Come on, you can do better than that. Let's hear it for Martin. Number four then, Peter Lloyd. Number five, Rob Fortune. Number six, coming up. Well, we've just got the number five on my head. Number six then, Jeremy Doncaster, Reading Speedway Team Captain. Alongside him, at number 24, with our reserve, Mark Woods. You are very quiet lately, I'm sure you've had a miss. Alongside him, from corner, number 46, Will James. Then number 55, Paul Fry, England Speedway Man. Then the, coming up, the British 350 champion, number 54, Andy Riley. <laughs> number 7, it's Gary Lobb, another very quick cornerman. Alongside him, Trevor Banks, third place in Europe this past, last weekend, well done, Trevor. Then uh, one of the young riders we're looking for, Paul Hurry. And then uh, 182, it's Rob Camden. And number 22, it's Darren Matthews. And number 17, a lot of interest here for Joe Screen, one of the joint leaders of the competition. Then it's Colin White. And then welcome back from injury to Vincent Kitchen. Then 203, Stuart Williams. <laughs> then Colin Earl. And then Richard Musson. And John Boston in his shades today. Then Jonathan Sims. <laughs> Got some time. Then Phil Ashcroft. Then Alan Farmer, another man who had a good European, uh, apart from the disappointing first half. Oh. Okay. And then uh, Chris Pickoff. Welcome back, Chris. Uh, back to the Masters. Another quick man who rides so well on the continent. Tony Forward. Then it's Clayton Williams. <laughs> then John Walmsley. Waking up, John. That's the girl, then. <laughs> then Tim <James> Fay. <laughs> then it's Peter Reed. <laughs> and then the poor man, back, Marvin Cox. And then the man who won the championship and um, championship before a Masters winner, it's Steve Schofield. And then the current holder of the Masters, three times world long track champion, Simon Wiggs. And then on the end of the row, a quick man around this circuit, number 26, it's Mark Lauren. Well, those are the solo competitors. How about a cheer for a lot of them? Come on, folks, let's uh, wish them well. Well done, fellas. We start with the presentation at this end of the finishing line to the Cornishman, Ken Hicks and John Peters. Moving quickly along, we've got another crew that I'm still doing a lot of local support for and a very, very quick Richard Piggott and Martin Bailey. <laughs> Two horses are taking time to have quite a long chat with Richard Trigger then, so I think he expects him to do well. The hands start shaking for our third crew along, that is of course number one in the program, Rob Cameron and Steve the Smurf Smith. <laughs> Already we're up to our bit number four in the lineup. That is number one in four. It's John Hitchcock and Shane Macklem. Great to see this crew here. The fifth crew that we come to. That is number 39 in your program. That is, of course, on a forward outfit. Shane Baker and Vincent Martin. Quickly moving along to outfit number 15. The up and coming Ira Matthews and Mike Dowles. Already oh, John has moved along to the next outfit, and that is outfit number 51. A lot of support for this one, I feel sure. It is, of course, Roger Mita and Steve Bailey. <laughs> oh, 
Of course, guys, for Roger B. Three C. B. We move on to Nick from Rover and passenger, of course, Chris Fires. Where do we move along? We're up to the father and son team of number three, the outfit of Alan and John Lewis. Next to Alan and John Blewett, we're moving along to outfit number 55, that is of course Jerry Adams and Sean Bishop. One very colourful crew that I think a lot of eyes are going to be on this afternoon. They're moving to them now, it's outfit number 6, it is of course the leaders of the championship so far, Russell Lane and Paul Yerich. Next to Russell Lane and Paul Yerich is our reserve. Dyer and not Lawrence who are in the program that is Tony Bannister. Already they're past Pete Dyer and Tony Bannister. They move to number 23 in the program that is of course Gary Jackson. Change of passenger this afternoon. His passenger is Kerry Williams. Right next door to Gary Jackson. They've already moved to an outfit that I'm really pleased to be able to see here this afternoon. A lot of you on shore will join me in saying it's a welcome to outfit number four, Steve Jerson, and passenger for the afternoon, Keith Ward. Already Don moves along to the next outfit in line and he shakes the hands of number seven in your lineup that is Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. Different machinery for the next crew that's coming to line, that is number 24 in the program, Robbie Wilson and Vince Jones. Well, it's starting to get out of my eyesight, but I'm sure that we've got down in there number 18 who comes in and gets a full blown ride this afternoon. He was down as a reserve, but he takes the place of Andy Sugg. It is Dave East and John Bokett. Only two more outfits to go, number nine in your program, that is of course the very, very stylish Marty Baker and brother-in-law Shane Cann. Well, we mentioned the change of outfits, this change of machinery for the last in the lineup. it is of course Mike Cameron and Paul Randall. So here we go, the riders coming out for race one and an afternoon's racing which will determine the winner of the Speedway Star British Master Championship of 1991. And uh, we look across the far side. Last week in Europe we had three gardens, one, two and three in the European Championship. Are we going to see our sponsors rewarded with a garden winning here this afternoon? So then, we look across to the far side, we see the smoke, we see the gate goes up, we see a clean start. And we see Simon Wick get away and uh, power down the straight. That's uh, we look at races you can see why we predicted early on that there will be no easy races here this afternoon Steve Schofield is very very quick on this track and the Paul Speedway man has got a tremendous record remember he won the Masters back in 88 second in 82 third in 83 fifth in 89 and of course uh, 
He knows this track well and always rides it very, very well indeed. So, so they're assembling on... <laughs> okay, it goes up, we've got another clean start. Across to the far side, Martin Hagen getting away well. Will James, I think he's going for this. Martin Hagen from Derenis, he's Schofield. Schofield goes to the inside, it touches your elbows and it's going in front. Uh, Martin Hagen in second place, Will James in third. If we look across to the far side, that was just a little bit of a moment as they went in that first time. Riley, Peter Reed, Trevor Banks, three Euro finalists there. Joe Screen goes in this one. One of the joint leaders, Tony Forward, Jeremy Doncaster, Jonathan Sims, and Peter Lloyd. Well, we look across to the far side then, Joe Screen, who's had uh, such a tremendous year. He tumbled on the speedway a few weeks back, but uh, seeming fit and well. Certainly practiced very well. And what's the friend one is Donkey? Is Donkey going to really get stuck in here because he can really surprise all of us? Joe Screen is in second place. It is indeed. It's, uh, Jeremy Doncaster who leads. Joe Screen in second place. Peter Reid up there in third place with Trevor Banks right on his elbow in, in the fourth. Andy Riley in fifth. Well, Andy Riley closes up the yard. Joe Screen in second place. Peter Reid still in third. Then Trevor Banks. Then Andy Riley. Then Peter Lloyd. Harry Forward tucked in there as well. And then Jonathan Sims. Another lap to go yet to this Jeremy Doncaster from Joe Screen, from Trevor Banks, from Peter Reed, from Andy Riley, from Peter Lloyd, from Tony Ford, from Jonathan Sims, and a big wheelie there from Joe Screen, but uh, it didn't help him close up Jeremy Doncaster. Victory then for Jeremy Doncaster. Well, Joe Screen. In second, Trevor Lang's third, then Peter Reid and Andy Riley very, very close, just ahead of Tony Forward. It's Paul Hurry, Gary Lobb, Chris Pitcock, Mark Lauren, one of the leaders, Clayton Williams, Stuart Williams, and Phil Ashcroft. Well, they come out to the line as we look across. Phil Ashcroft uh, been around to come into the place. See the... Uh,
three, Stuart Williams and Phil Ashcock right in behind him. And Chris Pitcock. Darren Matthews, just ahead of Chris Pitcock. And we'll be moving to the sidecar British Masters competition, the Speedway Star British Masters, any moment now. I shall pass across to Jim, who will st stare around me, try and see sideways out of the box, and uh, pick up the start of race five. Oh, I think I can see 90% of it, Tony, so that's going to be good enough to see this start go, because we do go into the final round of the Speedway Star 1991 British Masters Championship. And it's a great way to start because look at the lineup we've got for the first of the sidecar races this afternoon. You've seen them in practice, you must know who's going well, but Russelling is on the inside, but he's got a strong field and against him as Ivan Matthews makes a brilliant start. Ivan Matthews into that first corner, but Russelling has gone through on the inside of him. Ken Lane is up there as well. Ken Lane is second.
Robbie Wilson and Vince Jones still there in fourth though. They really do look as if they're getting used to riding that outfit. Starting to pull it in tight to the flags now. As they go into that stop end. But Gary Jackson stays the power line. He gets close as they come into that bottom bend. We're seeing the checker flag being made ready. And Gary Jackson's looking for a gap that isn't there. Roger Misa and Steve Bailey get a first win of the afternoon. Martin Baker just hang on to that second place. Gary Jackson with a good ride in third place. And fourth place there to Rob Wilson and Vince Jones. Race seven, looking for Ben Heath, of course, coming in the place of Andy Sugg. That's number 18, taking the place of number five. Ken Hicks and John Peters, they come to the line in grid two. Nick from Roller and Chris Spires in grid three. Steve Jewison, Keith Wall in grid four. Alan and John Blue in grid five. Jerry Adams and Sean Pittock in grid six. So interesting perhaps that we've seen the better gate so far come from the inside of the circuit. Russell Lee of course made a very good start from the inside in his first race. Ivan Matthews though was uh, probably going to say that I'm wrong saying that because he was in grid 5. Martin Baker made a good start from grid 5. Roger Misa, he was on the inside. Oh, we'll watch to see what happens in race 7. Ready there on the start line. Anxious eyes looking at that starting tape. The star not quite happy with the lineup at the moment. Pulls one or two riders back. Now they look as if they're ready. The tapes go up and away we go for race seven in your programme. The last of the first leg and it's Alan and John Blewett that get to the front. Oh, Jerry Adams is up there in second place and Steve Jewison up in the third at the moment. On. They go into that pit bend with quite a gap on Jerry Adams in second place. Steve Jewison still there in third place, but looking to come through on the inside of Jerry Adams. Steve Jewison letting Jerry Adams know he's there and goes through the gap into that top bend. So Jewison up in the second place at the moment. Jerry Adams still there in third. He's going after Jerry Adams as well, but Alan and John Blewett are going to take some catching. They really have got that motor on. I've uh, had some very big wins already this season. You might remember back to the bank holiday, that superb North Park circuit. They won the Barks Bonanza. They had a good ride. Oh, that's the first time I've been on the Barks Bonanza. And now throwing in the gap. Oh, interesting to watch where Steve Jordan gets quicker. This is where he seems to be a lot quicker. He's coming out of that pit bend, going down this finishing straight and into that top bend. He's gone for a wider line into that top bend and now closes to come back underneath as you can see he's starting to go on So, Martin Hagen on 46, Mark Loram on 48. This could uh, be quite a crucial race for both of them. While well, the riders then uh, lining up on the far side. This time Martin Hagen on uh, position one, Mark Lauren towards the middle on position four on the start line. Clay Williams looking to uh, make up for some ground he seemed to lose at the first round, but uh, a good first outing here this afternoon. And uh, I'm sure keen to uh, increase his total and uh, get up to uh, what he would consider as his rightful position in the Masters. So then we look across. Do you want to get down there with them? 
They come into line. They're cranking over the bars. See the smoke and the revs rise. They're away. So then, we're looking for it's Clayton Williams making a tremendous start. Clayton Williams really shot out of the gate, carrying on. Dispute the leader, it's Marshall Orme in front, Clayton Williams in second place, then Gary Love, then Jonathan Sims up, uh, up ahead of Martin Hagen, that's a ride for the young Worcester rider, but Martin Hagen looking to move forward here, got a little bit of work to do to... Uh, himself at the head of this one. Clayton Williams now has uh, Martin Hagen on his heels, who's moved ahead of Gary Long. Uh, Mark Lowe then leads into the last lap. Clayton Williams in second place. Then Martin Hagen. Then Gary Long. Then Stuart Williams just ahead of Andy Riley. And Andy Riley's got a little bit of ground to make up. So we're going to cross two the far side. It's Mark Lowe. Victory then for Mark Loram. Clayton Williams is going to get second place. Martin Hagen is third. Gary Love is fourth. In fifth place is Andy Ryan. In sixth place is Stuart Williams. A little way back for Tim Fay. A little way further, I think, for Jonathan Sims. So then, the second race, race in the second leg, which is race nine. Paul Fry, Chris Pidcock, Darren Matthews, Peter Reed, Simon Wigg goes in this one. Rob Fortune, Paul Hurry, and Joe Screen. Well, Joe Screen uh, dropped points in his first outing. Now, Simon Wigg, I'm sure, will be keen to get another maximum. This will be quite a race between these two. So the Reds rise, they are away, they break and power down the back straight there. Joe Screen is going to the front, it's Joe Screen who leads, Simon Wilk up in the second place, so it's Screen in front, Rob Fortune in third, then Chris Pitcock up in the fourth place. So then, Joe Screen has got the start he wanted. He's got a few metres advantage then on Simon Wigg. by pushing it across the line. Race 10. And here we've got Marvin Cox, John Boston, Bill Ashcroft, Rob Camden, Richard Musson, Steve Schofield, Colin White, and Trevor Banks. So the riders are being assembled on the far side. We can see Trevor Banks on the number eight position. That's the closest to the infield. So they break. And Trevor uh, make a very good start out of that eight. Put Marley Cox keeps it 
pressure on and do pull me hard at it. But, uh, he's Schofield for Marvin Cox with John Boston up into third place and Trevor Hanks making his way through to fourth. Richard Muston in fifth. And uh, Richard riding a rather torrid bottom bend there, but he's throws the bottom back. just ahead of Richard Musson, Peter Lloyd, Alan Farmer, Will James, Vincent Kinchin, John Walmsley and Tony Forward. On the far side then, Tony Forward, right. There is towards us, they're away, they break. And Jeremy Doncaster's done it again, another good start. for the top of the market. It's Will James up in the second place. In third place as they passed us, 172. Colin Earl having a good ride there. Yeah. Tony Forward sitting back in sixth place as we have crossed the far side. So, Jeremy Doncaster leads. Will James in second place. Colin Earl in third. And then Peter Lloyd behind him. And then Tony Forward. Then John Walmsley. And Vincent Kenshin obviously had a problem. So into the last lap they go with Jeremy Doncaster leading, Will James in second place. And it's still Peter Lloyd in fourth, just behind Colin Earl in third place. And uh, Tony Forward watching the battle just ahead of him. John Nisco and it's 51 Roger Mason. In grid four, right next to him is Russell Ng, and on the outside in grid six is John Hiscock and Shane Lapple. On the inside of the grid, Martin Baker, right on that very inside, Jerry Adams in grid two, and Ken Lane in the middle there, right next to Russell Ng. So that's how they line up already. I can see the outfits have got to the line. The starter lets them go. We get underway with race 12. We're away. And it is a good start from Marty Baker. Russelling has made a brilliant start and gone inside. Roger Mesa going into that first bend. Jerry Adams having to take a little bit of evasive action there but gets himself safely back on the circuit. Roger Meester is on the outside, he's looking to stay on the inside and get closer to Russell Ng. Russell Ng is still there in front of Roger Meester. He's got close, but he's still going for that wide line. He's not looking to close in yet. Or do we see it on the exit of this pit bend? No, he's stayed wide and Martin Baker's gone after him this time, which has allowed Ken Lane to come through. Ken Lane has got up in the third, or has he? It's very close for that third place as those two outfits are together as they went 
class B. corner they decided the outfit was in the way of the racing line so in the interest of safety they've put the red flag out it means the race has come to a halt it means they've got to do that all again as they go back to the start we will see that race all over again i'm sure the most disappointed people out there will be rustling and paul urich but of course they'll be geared up to do it again roger mesa will we see him take a different tact this time he stayed on the outside line for all of those three laps we might see a change of mind. He might go for the inside line this time. Now, of course, no Andy Sugg. He's a non-starter, of course. In his place comes number 18, Dave Heath and John Bokert. And on the outside grid, Nick from Roller. Grid 5, Robbie Wilson and Vince Jones. So a decision being made to allow the riders to... Uh, get themselves sorted out. They've gone back into the pits uh, from race 12. <laughs> we can enjoy them. <laughs> His first ride. So he'll be looking to repeat that performance. And really putting himself right in amongst it. He sits on 28 points at the moment. Ivan Matthews, you might remember, had a good start. So he'll be looking to repeat that again. Alan Little Blewett finishing a second first time out. So they'll be looking to repeat that once again. As we look to the start line, it sounds as if they're getting underway, and indeed they come by us for the first time. It's Richard Pickett has made a good start. He goes into that first corner with Ivor Matthews going after him. Ben Heath's up there as well in third place, but it's Ivor Matthews that's on the back wheel of Richard Pickett. Closing up on Dave Heath, who's in third place, but it's Alan and John in fourth place at the moment, trying to get first. Dave Heath's still there in third spot, but Richard Piggott has got the power on as he comes round off that pit bend, looking to choose his lines. Ivan Matthews is still there in second. Dave Heath holding third, but there's a lot of riders getting together as they can see Robbie Wilson has done it. I'm sure Keith will be anxious to do well this afternoon because of course he was the winning passenger last year on the uh, chair of Steve Smith of course and what a fitting crew really that uh, Steve Jerson was uh, three times in concession actually the three times winner of the Masters and that takes some doing Oh, Rob Cameron again has made a good start. He's got to the front, but Shane Baker is right up there with him. Gary Jackson around the outside. So three outfits together as they go into that pit bend for the first time. You can see Steve Jerson has moved through into third place now and going underneath Gary Jackson as well. Rob Cameron in his at least. Gary Jackson trying to get on the inside of Rob Cameron. Steve Jerson looking to follow him through, but it's forced to go a little bit wide. Comes back under. 
Cameron leading from Rob Cameron and Steve Smith. Steve Jewison goes through on the inside, does he? No, Rob Cameron comes through on the inside of Gary Jackson. It was close as they went past me. Signs from Smith Smith there telling Rob Cameron to keep it tight. He knows he's got Runner, you can leave a gap for somebody to come to on the inside and Jewison has done just that. He's got through in a second, he's close to the end, he's going to be close to the line, you see Jewison going into the ball to Rob Cameron as they go into that pit bend. Rob Cameron has still got it, but he knows that Jewison is there, and Jewison looks to come through on the inside, as a mistake from Cameron, he's going to be close to the line, and Jewison gets it. Well, indeed, it was close on his first ride, you can see he's pleased with that one, as his fist goes in the air going round that top bend. coming out for race 15. The first of the races in the third leg. We're looking for Darren Matthews, Rob Camden, Colin Earl, Simon Wigg, John Boston, Alan Farmer, Mark Loram and Jeremy Doncaster. That is Darren Matthews just ahead of 172 Colin Earl. So, race 16 coming up with uh, Colin White, Chris Pitcock, John Walmsley, Vincent Kinchin, Phil Ashcroft, Tim Fay, Clayton Williams, and Steve Schofield. <laughs> Well, you will, I'm sure, have worked this out before us, but uh, quickly looking at it, we've got Mark Lorham now sitting on 66, Simon Wigg on 62, and Jeremy Doncaster on 60. He's getting nearer and nearer. So then. Oh, sorry. So with race 16 assembling on the start line, right, coming into line, they're away, Schofield on the inside, doesn't make the best of starts as we've across to the far side. Schofield now, Schofield who leads. Looks like Chris Pitcock up in second place, Clayton Williams in third, John Walmsley in fourth. And they all go around that bend uh, by the side guy starting, quite a gaggle for the minor placings. And Vince Kinchin in trouble, Kinchin in trouble. Schofield. 
over his shoulder, looks fast. Late one in, now through to second place. With John Walmsley in third, Chris Pitchock in fourth, and then coming through number 31, Colin White. So then, Steve Schofield settling into his normal weight. Then Phil Ashcroft. So we look across and see race 17 assembling on the start line. And we can see that Stuart Williams is taking up the position on the right, uh, the inside of the start uh, to us, the closest to us. It's Gary Lobb, Rob Fortune, Terry Ford, Andy Riley, Paul Hurry, Marvin Cox, Will James, and Marvin Cox is in front behind him. He's got uh, a battle on his hand, and Rob Fortune is going for it as well. There's Rob Fortune uh, with uh, and Will James really having a go there, but uh, looks like Rob Fortune goes past Marvin Cox. Rob Fortune, there is Rob Fortune to uh, lead. Marvin Cox is right there with him now. Cox goes back in front. Still Will James in that third. Gary Lobb in fourth. Andy Riley in fifth. And uh, looks like Tony Forward back in uh, seventh place. Pulling away from Rob Fortune in second place. And it looks like Will James is in trouble. Will James in trouble. Machine locks up there. The back wheel locks up on Will James there. And uh, the problem is that the hurriedly lifting the machine off the track. Well done, Will. Smile down. Marvin Cox. Check as well. Marvin Cox is going to win. Rob Fortune is going to get second place. Gary Lobb is going to get third. Who's going to get fourth? Andy Riley just ahead of Tony Forward. And then Stuart Williams. And then Paul Hurry. But uh, Joe Screen. It's Martin Hagen, and Trevor Manx, and Jonathan Sims, and Richard Musson, Peter Reed, and Peter Lloyd, and Paul Fry. And it's Paul Fry on the uh, side of the gate nearest to us this time, the nearest to the infield. The gate goes up. Trevor Manx on one of the outer positions looking for Martin Hagen. Here comes Joe Screen up the inside, but Martin Hagen is still there, Joe Screen in second place, Trevor Banks in third, Paul Fry in fourth, Peter Reed in fifth, and it looks like Peter Lloyd behind him, so it's all happening on the far side there, and Martin Hagen, the man who says uh, he's going to... ...was leading, but Joe Screen charges through, and Martin Hagen fights back, and it's Hagen who uh, comes back, it's Hagen in front, Screen again on the outside, Screen riding around the outside, I think he's got away with it this time, so it's Joe Screen who leads, Martin Hagen in second place, Trevor Banks in third. Third place, Trevor Banks in 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 third place,
Ivan Matthews in grid four. He's been scoring well this afternoon. Rob Cameron, you might remember, had a brilliant dice with Steve Jewison. Doesn't seem too long ago, does it? That's uh, Rob Cameron and Steve Smith. And in grid six, right on the outside, a mixed day the day for Jerry Adams and Sean Bitter. So, chance once again for Richard Piggott to score good points, or is Rob Cameron, Ivan Matthews and Gary Jackson going to give him a hard time? <laughs> so away we go with race 19, it's the start of the third leg of the sidecars and it is Rob Cameron that's gone for that first corner, Richard Piggy is right up there on the tight line on the inside, Gary Jackson has followed Richard Piggy through but it's the Rob Cameron on the outside and Steve Smith is on It means that the advantage has been given to Richard Piggott. He breaks into that pit bender. Look at those three sidecars together at the back of the field. Ivan Matthews is in there, number 15. Well, that looks to me like Gary Moon's outfit has come out with Ben Heath. So, uh, big change in outfit there. The Ben Heath is going to be very foul. He holds that second place going into that pit bend, but Gary Jackson's got a much tighter and tidier line as he comes through on the inside. Oh, as we watch the go into that top bend, it is Richard Biggins that's got away from the rest of the field. This is Richard Biggins this afternoon. Into that pit bend, Richard Biggins and Martin Bailey still holding a very comfortable lead. Gary Jackson is there in second. But as they take the last lap flag, it's Richard Piggott and Martin Bailey that lead. All sorts of problems for Rob Cameron there, but everybody managing to avoid him on that bottom corner. Means that Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams got to be off that second place, but it could be a change for third as Gerry Adams As the checker flag is out, it's going to be his third win of the afternoon for Richard Piggott. And as Gary Jackson goes sideways in that bottom pen, I apologise, he certainly made me hold my breath because uh, everybody just about managed to avoid him. Really, really unlucky for Gary Jackson, but brilliant to be able to get out of the way of everybody else. Well, we move on to race 20 and coming to the line in grid one is Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. Grid two, John Hiscock and Shane Lapham. Grid three, Rob Wilson and Vince Jones. Grid four, Shane Baker, Glinda Martin. Grid five, Steve Jewison and Keith Wall. And grid six, Martin Baker and Shane Can. That's the lineup, of course, so we look to see what will happen in race 20. And as they get underway, it is indeed making the right Martin Baker that goes into the first corner. Ken Lane has gone after them on the inside, powering it into that top end. Like you see that Robbie Wilson has gone back to his right track outfit. Robbie Wilson has gone back to his right track outfit and holds second place. Do you see Shane Baker getting close to Ken Lane? They're going into that pit bend. Ken Lane still there in second place. There's Robbie Wilson's gone wide. It looked like Rob Wilson was in second, but Ken Lane has moved through. Rob Wilson, as they went past me, they looked to just have it to those go on a very, very wide line. Well, the outfit's lucky. Rob Wilson and Ken Lane goes right up on the back wheel of Martin Baker. Rob Wilson again goes very, very wide. Ken Lane has opted for the inside line. They come past me again. That is indeed Rob Wilson goes around the outside of Martin Baker. That's a very, very wide line that Rob Wilson is riding. He's leaving the gap for Ken Lane.
Well, I certainly wouldn't have liked to predict who was going to win it on the end of that third lap. But what a tremendous finish. It seems whatever race Steve Jordan and Keith Wall are in, it's going to be a close finish. On grid one, Ken Hicks, John Peters. Grid two, Nick Promroller, Chris Spies. Grid three, Russell Lee and Paul Urich. Grid four, Alan and John Blewett. Grid five, Mike Cameron and Paul Randall. And grid six, Right up there with 35 points as well, Roger Misa and Steve Bailey. So we've seen Richard Piggott increase his title challenge with a 10 points, making him a running total of 45. This is, of course, very unofficial. But coming to the line, we've got the other two top runners. He says Robbie Wilson's gone wide. It looked like Rob Wilson was in second, but Ken Lane has moved through. Rob Wilson, as he went past me, now looked to just to have it to those guys. This is, of course, very unofficial. But coming to the line, we've got the other two top runners. I was carrying ten points through. Of course, it was seven. No one's taking notice of what I'm saying. And away we go with race 21. And there's Roger Meester and Steve Bailey that get into that first corner. Rustling has gone after them. It's Roger Meester that leads her going down that way. Nick Promoter in third and Alan and John Blewett in fourth. 